On July 2nd, 2021, a movie was released called The Tomorrow War. Now we now know that the elite and secret societies use Jesuit theater to mock, belittle, they prepare and brainwash and actually tell their future plans to the public. Now in the case of this movie, The Tomorrow War, they tell us the true events of the Bible in the end times, like the fall of Satan, the mark of the beast, certain laws they're going to pass, and the first and second resurrection, and who they will kill at the end. Come with me as we look at the movie Tomorrow War, and let us reason together. Now as you watch this movie, you need to remember that characters can symbolize different people. For example, the main character Dan symbolizes Satan in one scene, but in another scene, he's a good guy. Another example is the aliens. In the movie, the aliens are bad, but in real life, they represent good people. The same goes for different scenes. A scene can symbolize different events in time. For example, the main character is falling from the sky, which represents an event. But then there's another event where he's falling from the sky, which could represent another event in our time, in real life. So with this in mind, let's get started. This is the movie. Boy, they say kids never come by unless they need something. Dad, I need your help. I'll get my coat. 30 years in the future, we are fighting a war. Our enemy is not human, and we are losing. We need you to fight. I will be back. And I love you, Chickpea. Seven days from now, when you're sent into that war, you won't be fighting for your country. You'll be fighting for the world. Is it all right? Yeah. Going to war. Stop talking. Listen. Sorry, I, I mean, when I'm nervous, I talk. I'm like 90, 97 on the nervous scale. That should be fun. Welcome to the future. This is what they want you to believe. That they're just fighting aliens. And they're trying to save the world. But in reality, it's a message to the elite and to the informed that they are going to execute their plan. Now to understand the real meaning to the movie, we need to look at some Bible events. And then we're going to see if we can see those events in this movie. Now what I want to do now is look at biblical events that are going to happen at the end of time. And you're going to be amazed because all these events are all inserted into this movie. Let's look at event number one. Satan falls from heaven. And Revelation 12, 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Event number two, he makes war with God's people who keep the commandments. It says, And that dragon was wroth with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And now he creates a way to single out those people by creating a mark. And it says in the Bible, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And then, Jesus will return to the earth and resurrect the dead. It says in the Bible, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And how long will we be with the Lord? It says in Revelation 20, verse 6, 
Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And then after the thousand years, we come back to this earth to make it new, to get rid of sin, to get rid of Satan and the wicked. So we come back down to this earth, and it says in Revelation 20 verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now let's put this into perspective. I want to put this in a graph. So first event, Satan falls. And he has time to make war with the remnant, with God's people throughout the ages. Now theologians agree that We've been living on this earth for 6,000 years. For 6,000 years, he's been trying to kill God's people. And at the very end, before the second coming of Jesus, the Antichrist will be revealed, and they will make a mark of the beast. And this mark is going to distinguish if you're on God's side or if you're on Satan's side. Are you going to believe the laws of man? Or are you going to believe the Ten Commandment laws of God, His eternal law? And then, at some point, Jesus will return. And this is a first resurrection. So once again, the dead in Christ will rise, and the ones that are alive at that point will meet the resurrected in the air. Now you're probably wondering, what happens to the wicked at this point? Well, the brightness of Jesus is going to kill anybody, any wicked that's alive at that point. So for a thousand years, for a thousand years, we're going to be in heaven. We're going to be learning what happened with the world. And he's going to show us the story of redemption. What happened to us in 1994 when we we're hanging out at that party? Were the angels trying to protect us? He's going to show us all the secrets of this world and the books are going to be open to us. If my best friend doesn't make it to heaven, if my pastor didn't make it to heaven, I can actually go to the books and read and see why. Why did he not make it into heaven? And I can see if God is just. And for a thousand years, the unsaved are going to be dead on this earth. And then when the thousand years is up, we come back down. And that is a second resurrection. And this one has no life because it's the resurrection of damnation. We come down in the new Jerusalem and we land on this earth. And this is when everybody is resurrected and they're going to try to fight against us. But they won't win. And God will burn this earth and burn the wicked and he will make all things new. Now let's see if we can actually see this timeline within this movie. Do the elite know the sequence of the true biblical events at the end? Let's see.
Now do you remember when Satan, sin, and the wicked are thrown into the lake of fire? Do you remember that the theologians admit that we've lived here for 6,000 years and we go to heaven for a thousand years and that total is 7,000 years. And in the movie, seven is a significant number. This right here is a transcript to the movie. Now in the navigation box, I searched for the word seven and this is what came up. Seven days later, those hopes were dashed as only a handful of troops survived. It said that I die in seven years. About your seven days. It's seven days I'll survive. Seven days from now. Your tour of duty will be seven days. I thought we had seven days. The engineer says 10987. That's not bad. All right, process. To the lab on seven. On the seventh floor? Why do they keep using seven? The laboratory on the seventh floor? Lab on seven? They'd say I die in seven years. An automated voice. Seven minutes to jump? And Dan says, I never told you about our seven days together. Why do they keep using the number seven. Do they know that they will die at the end of the 7,000 years? Are they really trying to stop the end of the world? Now these events are very clear, but there are still unanswered questions like who do the aliens represent and what is the mark of the beast? Let's first find out who Satan wants to kill at the end. Let's look at the alien's name. The female alien and her children are called white spikes. Now what do spikes mean? One definition to spike is stop the progress of. It also says it means to put an end to, put a lid on it, derail, frustrate, foil, hinder, obstruct. Now let's flip the name and let's call them spike white. In other words, put an end or kill white. Now we know that a woman in the Bible represents God's church. So my question to you, is there a church that has a connection to someone that is named white? And does this woman keep the commandments of God? Now here's just a few churches. All these churches claim to follow Jesus. So how can we identify the enemy if there's so many Christian denominations? Well, let's go back to the movie. In the movie, the aliens rest on the seventh day and the army called it their Sabbath. And since there are many religions and different Sabbaths, we still need to find out which Sabbath they're talking about. Now the movie opened July 2nd, which was a Friday. So the Tomorrow War started Friday and the tomorrow is Saturday. In other words, a war on Saturday. Now in reality, is there a war on the true Sabbath, which is Saturday? But think about, you know, if you have a child, the difference between 98.6 and 103.6 uh, is a big difference. And if your child has a fever and it doesn't go away and keeps getting higher, you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you what you should do and then you do it. The planet has a fever. It's going up. It's not going away. Good analogy. Well, and now the crib's on fire. Yeah. And, uh, and, and some of these... Uh, Good analogy. Good analogy. Good analogy. And so, some of these I characters are asking if the baby's flower, flame retardant. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous. So the, the, the country, ha the earth has a fever and now the, the crib is on fire. We get that. Now according to Ladato C's chapter 6, paragraph 237, the Pope is trying to push a day of rest. 
Now I want you to know that Pope Francis actually admits that the true biblical day of rest is Saturday, the seventh day. But he is choosing another day, a day of rest centered on the Eucharist, which is Sunday. Let's read it for ourselves. It says here on paragraph 237, On Sunday our participation in the Eucharist has a special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day. So here, he's admitting that yes, it's the first day of the week. It's not the seventh day, which is the Sabbath of the Lord. And he goes on to say here, the law of the weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day. That is biblical. So that our ox and your donkey may have rest and the son of your maidservant and the stranger may be refreshed. And this is found in the Bible and he admits this. It's found in Exodus 23, 12. But he goes on to say this. Rest opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. And so, the day of rest centered on the Eucharist. And which day of rest is centered on the Eucharist? It says here, on Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. So the Pope is choosing another day of rest, not the biblical day of rest. It is necessary to hold Sunday in special high regard in order to remain united to Christ as it is the day dedicated to the Lord. Without the Lord's day, we cannot live. That meeting with the Lord only occurs on the specific day of Sunday. That life does not flourish without Sunday, and that Sunday is a day of rest, of freedom, of equality, for all the world. Protestants accept Sunday rather than Saturday as a day for public worship after the Catholic Church made the change. But the Protestant's mind does not seem to realize that in accepting the Bible, in observing the Sunday, they are accepting the authority of the spokesman for the Church, the Pope. Had she not such power, she could not have done that, in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Um, Kanye Sunday service. Uh, because he created a church service with music that's turned into these really big weekly events. And we had David Letterman on the show, and I asked him about it, and he raved about it. And now Kanye has a ch has he started a church, or what's going on? Because I see that there's a church now that he's going yeah, to Yeah, we regularly. didn't really have a name for it, because it's more of just a healing experience. This is his new album. It's called Jesus is King. Here with the songs Closed on Sunday and Faith from the Oculus New York City, Kanye West. Closed on Sunday. Closed on Sunday. You, you my Chick-fil-A. Closed on Sunday. Sunday. First of all, to have church on the beach is simply incredible. A pop-up church at the oceanfront to start the final day of Pharrell's Something in the Water Festival. Williams is a member of our congregation. He's my nephew, and we're just honored to work with him with the pop-up church. Bishop Williams is part of Faith World Ministries. He says the pop-up church started with a conversation with Pharrell. Pharrell understands his mission. He knows that the hand of God is upon his life and that he has a responsibility because of the favor and the influence that he has to bring people together for positive change. We are interpreters 
So it's like having that thing, having that gift, um, and being able to share that gift with people, complete strangers, regardless to what they think politically, regardless to how they feel religiously. It's the one thing. It's like music is a unifier. Well, now, like most concerts, Kanye was selling merchandise. Sure. It was available under a tent called Church Clothes. So that's what you can Who dropped the ball not calling it church merch? Well, that's what, that's what we'll see in a second that someone else refers it to church merch. But no, in terms of the tent, it said church, church clothes. Church clothes? Yeah. Oh, man. Put on your church clothes. All right. Okay, yeah. So How much was it? So one sweatshirt was 175 Another was 225 Come on. T-shirt was 70 bucks. $70 for a T-shirt. <laughs> Sweatpants were $195. Uh huh Even the socks were 50 bucks. All right. $25 each. forward like you want to go back and use some of these tech techniques and these ideas oh. in order to Rome is dismantle the, it ultimately yeah like Rome is the is the true Silicon Valley of humanity a lot of the ideas and things that we need yeah. have been are from thousands and thousands of years ago it's just like what do we need for our yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of need chart Katy Perry dressed in her Sunday best to meet Pope Francis hours ago. You guys are having too much fun this morning. She tweeted out this photo of the moment she shook hands with the pontiff, saying oh. she was honored to meet him. The American Idol judge in Rome for the Unite to Cure conference with world leaders to talk about the health benefits of meditation. And she brought her squad, including her mama and Bo Orlando Bloom. Also in the video, hey, hey.
So there you have it. The enemy of the world and Satan are the ones that keep Saturday Sabbath and has a connection with the name White. Now what religion worships on Saturday and has the name White? Well, according to Wikipedia, the Seventh-day Adventist Church worships on the seventh day, Saturday, and was founded by Alan G. White. Now why would the world hate Alan G. White? In the Bible throughout the ages, God appointed prophets to help his people through a certain time period. The Seventh-day Adventist Church believes that Alan White was chosen to help his people at the end of time, just before Jesus returned. Let's look at some of her prophecies and take note of the year she made these prophecies. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue, and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is tending. This was in December 11, 1888. Another one of her prophecies is, they are working in blindness. They do not see that if a Protestant government sacrifices the principles that have made them a free, independent nation, and through legislation bringing into the Constitution principles that will propagate papal falsehood and papal delusion, they are plunging into the Roman horrors of the Dark Ages. Can you begin to see why they hate this prophet? Those who are making an effort to change the constitution and secure a law enforcing Sunday observance little realize what will be the result. A crisis is just upon us. That was in 1889. Can you see why they hate Ellen White? She founded a church that obeys God and his commandments. She reveals secrets and events that are happening in the future. And the most important thing is she leads people to Jesus. Dear children, look to your eternal interests. Love what God loves and have your thoughts tending heavenward. Oh, do not let your mind be filled with earth, vanity, and pride. You will have trials, but go to Jesus for patience and strength that you may hold the victory. Let your trust be fully in God. Remember that Jesus died to save you. And cannot you deny yourself for Jesus and for others' good? Jesus has gone to prepare mansions for those that love him, that where he is gone, they may be also. If you are faithful, you will go to those blessed mansions. All will be joy beauty and loveliness. There, no trials will ever come. There, none will say, I am sick. Heaven, sweet heaven, will be our blessed and happy home. Alan G. White. So what path or religion are you mm -hmm. in your pursuit of perfection with God? <laughs> what, 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 what are um, you? I was raised Seventh-day Adventist. Okay, and what um, does that mean? Seventh-day Adventist is a Christian denomination, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we believe is observing the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. uh, so from a young child, you know, being brought up, I was always brought up with Sabbath observance. So Friday night sundown, or Saturday night sundown, as mentioned in the Ten Commandments, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Uh, and then also Jesus uh, observed Sabbath as well. Yeah. So it's one day where I don't check my emails, I don't respond to work calls, I don't read from Friday night, Friday night, Sunday sundown to Saturday Seven. night, Sunday. Yeah. No work. You don't check your emails. No. That's, that's, like, a, there's a function. that's, a, that's like against the commandment of Hollywood <laughs> that thou shalt carry thy but Blackberry at all times. But for me, Sabbath is a time to recharge. It's a time to rest. It's a time to spend time with my family. Uh, it's a time to spiritually reconnect. Yeah. For your first job, I mean, I'm sorry yeah, to interrupt. Okay, for your first job, uh, working as an intern with yes. Will Smith, yes. you say to them, yeah. look, I have to have the Sabbath yes. off, yes. which may I just sit, confess that I learned in my first meeting with Devon, all these years I thought the Sabbath was Sunday. Yeah. I've been going to church. We say worship on the Sabbath, wor worship on the Sabbath in the Baptist church. And you corrected me. You said, no, Sunday is the first day of the week. Yeah. Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's right. That's I right. stand corrected. 
Perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change the church ever did, happened in the first century. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday. The day of the Lord was chosen not from any direction noted in the scriptures, but from the church's sense of its own power. People who think that the scriptures should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep Saturday holy. The Adventists are the only body of Christians with the Bible as their teacher who could find no warrant in its pages for the change of the day from the seventh to the first. Hence, their appellation, Seventh-day Adventists. Their carnal principle consists in setting apart Saturday for the exclusive worship of God in conformity with the positive command of God Himself, repeatedly reiterated in the sacred books of the Old and the New Testaments, literally kept by the children of Israel for thousands of years to this day, and endorsed by the teaching and the practice of the Son of God while on earth. This movie is a signal to the elite that it's time to wage war with God's remnant church, the ones that keep the commandments of God. And within those commandments, they keep the fourth commandment that says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thee shall work, but the seventh is a Sabbath of the Lord. The Sabbath of the Lord, not a Sabbath for climate change or workers' rights not a Sabbath for diseases and masks, and not a Sabbath for man.